So I've decided that I'm going to try growing from seeds again. And I have this, I have found a new mentor and his name is Frank. And he gave me some tips which I'm thinking of trying out. So let me go run that down in this video. So the first step of course is to gather the seeds. And of course, we know that we can get the seeds from the flowers. So flowers have to be fertilized first before they dry out. And while they're drying out, they're producing seeds. So it's important that you know which flowers have been fertilized and which ones aren't yet. And it's, it's quite easy. Unfertilized flowers would still be open like this. While fertilized flowers would close and bulge up. So like this one, it's already started closing. And eventually they will completely dry up. And when you remove the petals and sepals, this will reveal seed pods. However, what I've learned the hard way because this was what I was doing wrong before. Any seed will not do. You have to get them at the right maturity. So this part, this part might be tricky. I have learned that there are a few schools of thought about it. In my previous learnings and in my previous attempts, I have been following the, the idea that the seeds need time to be mature and they need time to be dormant so this is the stratification period so the uh, this dormancy this mini and mini dormancy that they undergo is when they shed off the outer coating of the seeds before they start germinating but according to another new another technique that i learned and from my new mentor he said that all I need to do is to harvest the seeds at the right time. So I have to identify, be able to identify which flowers, which seeds are ripe, ripe enough and at the perfect stage of their development. Before we start looking at seeds, we have to start looking at flowers first. So let me show you this one. This is from my elegance and these flowers are still quite young the ones at the tip haven't opened yet and the ones at the top here the older flowers have already opened they are starting to bloom they are about to bloom same story here so the youngest ones are still closed and as we go up the stem we see them progressively open and behind the open ones are these ones. This is this has closed up again. This signifies that it has already been fertilized. And the more you go along the stem again, the more you will see that they are dried up. So the older the older flowers complete the process first before the younger ones. So here's another stalk to look at. So right at the tip, the flowers are still open, waiting to be pollinated. Then right behind it, this ones, this ones are already closed. This means that they have already been pollinated. Then as we progressively go down the stalk, the flowers look more dry until we get to, to the very edge, the very end, where the seed looks maybe a bit crispy. I think that's a good way to describe them. So what you want basically is somewhere in the middle. So not too fresh, because when they're still fresh, they all stick up together and they're not viable, they're not ready. And too old and they might not you know, you might have lower chance of germination. So somewhere in the middle. When I first heard about this, my immediate thought was the Goldilocks zone. 
So these ones are too old and these ones are too young. And this is just right. This time we're looking at my Orion. It's easy for flowers shaped like these. They form a single line, single stalk. No, not much branching here. So it's easy to find out which ones are the older flowers and which ones are the newer flowers. So the ones at the closer to the plant are the older flowers. And the ones further away are the newer ones. So if you imagine, uh, imagine time pass, these ones would mature first, then eventually these ones would open, and then once they get fertilized, they would close again and bulk up. It might get a bit tricky once you work with flowers from other cultivars where they branch out like crazy. So this is a Pearl von Nunberg, as you can see. And on this stalk, flowers branch out. Flowers are on multiple branches. And all you have to do is to follow each branch and, you know, just treat each branch as the same as the, the previous type where the ones closer to the plant are older and the ones further away are newer. So in this case, let's say this stalk, the Goldilocks zone might be somewhere here. The number of flowers are different, but you know, the general principle stands. So we're looking at my big red and it has a flower stalk. And as you can see, all of the leaves, all of the flowers are dry now. And none of these are viable anymore because they have been burnt to a crisp by the sun. So my previous mistake was that I was harvesting seeds from flowers like this because I was thinking that they have had enough time to mature and they might be more ready. So maybe this was what, what was wrong with my previous attempts. Now we are looking at my pastel and it has this flower stalk with multiple branches. I am thinking of harvesting from this plant because as you can see, all of them are already pollinated. There's no unpollinated flowers. And you know they are pollinated because the base, the base of each flower is, uh, is fat and thick and the tips are closed. So they're protecting the seed buds from going out before, from opening up before they are ready. So following the principle of the Goldilocks zone, so let's take this stalk for example. These ones are still fleshy and still, maybe still quite moist. And these ones are quite dry and already crispy to the touch. So what we're going to do is to take from somewhere here. I think a good rule of the thumb, but I'm not yet, you know, this is just my personal observation. A good rule of the thumb is to check if, so you have to identify the sepals. These are the petals. These ones are the petals. And the ones around it are the sepals. So what I'm going to do is to pick those the first ones whose sepals have already dried up, like this one. I'm going to go to the other stalks. So this one has dried already. How about here? This one has dried out. So I'll just get two of each. This one has dried out. Yes, I think I already got them. So I've got some flowers here. You know, I, I realized that I said the wrong name. This is actually a Princess Anne, not a pastel. So I got myself another seedling tray and I'm going to sow various seeds in here. 
And of course, the first step is to prepare the soil. So I'm going to do the same steps I did before. And so the next step is to prepare your soil. So what I'm going to do first is take a base of my regular organic soil mix. But uh, this, are, this contains larger, larger particles, so I'm going to sift them using this tray. So to do that, all I have to, to do is to pour some soil on the tray. And shake it over this tiny bowl. And I'll keep doing it until I fill up this one. I now have my base. And the next step is for me to add a bit more grit. And for that, I have this sand, coarse sand. I'm going to mix it with this base. I th at maybe I think um, one is to two or one is to one ratio. I'm not sure, but I want it to be pretty coarse. So maybe I'll do a one is to one. So to ensure that I have the same ratio, I'm going to use a smaller cup which is actually a smaller pot. I'm just going to dig in. So it's one, one cup full. two cups. Maybe I'll go for three because the, the container is large enough anyway. So three cups. And now for the sand. Again, I'm going for three cups since this is a one is to one ratio. Two, three. Now that I have them in this larger container, all I have to do is to mix them up. Mix them evenly as much as I can. So this, this is creating a mixture that, that's really loose, loosely held. I'm not sure if this is too loose. I might have to retro fix this. But I'll go with 1 is to 1 for now and maybe I'll do another batch with 1 is to 2 ratio. Just to compare, just to see if this, if this makes any difference. Having thoroughly mixed the soil, I'm going to fill up the cells of this tray. Man, it's quite windy today. I hope it doesn't rain. So I've completely filled the tray with soil. I need some sort of marker to know which one is which. So I'm going to mark one of the edges here. Maybe one of the corners, top left corner. And this will serve as my cell zero or maybe I could just label the columns and rows that might be easier yeah that's what I'm going to do now so just like cells in a spreadsheet I'm going to mark them now
it's quite windy to work on this today and I haven't harvested all the seeds yet so I'll just cover this tray for now. The reason for doing this is because I don't want any grass seeds or anything anything else to, to grow in it. So I'm going to leave it as clean as I can. So just so I remember the flowers that I'm taking, I'm going to document them in videos. And this first one, these are flower stalks from an Echeveria chihuahuaensis. So I'm just going to gather some of the flowers that are a, a bit dry, but not too dry. And from the looks of things, maybe it's this ones. Yeah, I'll have another go. And I'll try harvesting from this ones. Doesn't seem to be as windy today compared to last time. So I'll have another go at seed collection today. I'd like to have a go with my Orion. And as you can see, some of the flowers here are already ready. Some are too dry, some are just right, and some are not yet pollinated. So I'm going to cut all of the flower stalks. So with the flower stalks cut and removed, this means that most of the energy will be spent towards growing the main rosette. So less energy in seed production and happier plant. I'm just going to cut this one by one. Just going to go as low as I can. Maybe next time I'm going to use a more slender pair of scissors or something. But in any case, oh, with the flowers. The flowers on this Benimusume look ready. So I'm going to cut them off as well. The flowers on this pastel are, are at various stages of dryness. So I'll go ahead and take some. I'd also like to be able to take some from the blondie because the flowers look ready. I'm going to cut off this stalk. I'll try taking some from this Colorata Brandy as well. There's also some I can use on this Sagita. So I'm going to chop off the flower stalks now. I'm going to take some from this Princess Anne as well. There's, there might still be some usable ones here. Hopefully. Maybe I can use some flowers from the Rosea Grandes. Some are dry, some aren't. But we'll see where, where we get. Lots here on this Pearl von Nunberg. So time to chop. I'm 
there's also some here on the embossed gem that I might be able to use. So I'll go get them. I want to have a go with this jade point as well. Has quite a few flower stalks. So now I have 12 types of flowers. And this is good because my mini greenhouse has 24 cells 24 cells in a 6x4 configuration so i could give each type of flower two cells to work with i think this is this is a good idea So there's a lot of flowers to go through and harvesting them, harvesting the seeds would be lots of work. So this calls for a montage.
So I am done sowing the seeds. And I have written down a guide so I know which seeds are going into which cell. And where I go from here is that I have to water the tray, water from underneath, and then set it into a shaded area. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to use the jet setting on my hose, but gently. So I, so I have a thin stream to go into the, into the tray. So I need to water them from below, so this does not disturb the seeds. But I have to be careful with my stream. I'm just going to fill it halfway with water and from my vantage point I can see it. So once the water is there, I'm going to leave this tray for maybe half an hour or a quarter of an hour. That way they get enough time to soak up. So keep going, keep going, almost there, there, that should be good enough. So I'm going to cover it now. Maybe I'll just leave it here and wait for about 10 to 15 minutes for it to fully soak unless it happens earlier it took a few minutes but they look soaked now I think it was only 5 minutes anyway I'm going to drain excess water now hopefully this method is enough but I'm not sure if I'm doing it right So I'll just make sure to drain as much as I can. So I have finished draining it and now all I need to do is to cover it again and set it somewhere there where it doesn't it won't get uh, any any sun exposure. So it's, it's just going to sit in shaded area. As for these notes, I'm pretty sure I'll be losing this copy after a while. So I better transcribe this into my computer. That way I have a digital copy and I'm sure it won't be lost. I guess all I have to do is to wait. <laughs> 